reason I say there is a Cold War now is that a Cold War is not a hot war. It's rivalry short of violence. Mm -hmm. And I think that very much describes what we're seeing today between the United States on one side and China on the other. It's very clear that the two are in contention over a whole range of issues. Primacy in the world order, influence in regions, prevailing in an economic contest, including a technological contest, and even uh, in respect of culture, whose values, civilizational or political, uh, is going to win the day and get the loyalty of others around the world. So I think if you add all that up, a wide-ranging, globalized, pretty intense competition between two massive proponents of a certain way of life with the backing of military and economic power, then I think that pretty much describes a Cold War. It didn't begin with the accession of President uh, Trump to power. It predated that, but it's mm -hmm. shown now very clearly with two larger-than-life figures in Trump and in President Xi Jinping on the other side. So I would say this is exactly the reason that we're in a Cold War. Big personalities, big issues, contention and rivalry short of war. And why short of war? Because just as in the original Cold War, the costs of actual hostilities are far too high, especially with nuclear weapons around. So that's my case for a new Cold War. It would be better to think of the current tensions and rivalry between the two big powers as a type of Cold War, but not the Cold War itself. You can call it strategic competition, you can call it trade and technology war, but to call it a Cold War suggests certain things. First of all, there has to be a strong ideological component to the Cold War. In China today, uh, most China scholars will tell you that China is ideologically bankrupt. There is no coherent ideology, so the lack of an ideologically strong China with a set of values that is appealing to a wide international audience is what I would consider to be the reason why there cannot be uh, a new Cold War. There is no Cold War right now. You're wrong. There is an ideological struggle. Uh, it doesn't really matter what Xi Jinping says in public or he doesn't say in public or what mm -hmm. Trump says in public, beyond the point. It's what they're actually doing and what they're talking about in their inner councils. And the reason I say there is an ideological war is that there is a different relationship between the government and economic processes, between government and individual citizens sometimes, is that they do hold to these different values and how they behave with each other and with other countries where they're seeking influence. This is a difference in political system. It, it's not about ideology per se, but it's about political systems. It is about a democratic system versus authoritarian system. I wouldn't say that this is an ideological war because it's just about how governments are organized. It is not communism versus democracy or communism versus capitalism. It is not that. It is about what you believe is a, uh, the right political system for your own country. All right, so now we're going to talk about the trade war and the technology war. We know that what's happening with Huawei and with ZTE and the actions that Trump has taken in slapping additional tariffs on Chinese goods and the recent failure of the trade negotiations between the Chinese and the Americans. Now, I see this uh, trade war and the technology war as part of a larger strategic competition between the two countries. They're not going to get better. And as a result of which, you're going to see changes in the way that trade and economics and technology is organized in the world. You're going to see disruptions in a global value chain. I think you sort of prove my point that there is a competition short of war, which is intense, and it's now being translated and pushed by uh, economics. This happened during the classic Cold War, the original Cold War, where the United States and allies denied certain kinds of access, certain kinds of technologies, certain kinds of economic interactions with the Warsaw Pact led by the Soviet Union. Trump has really, in a sense, joined that issue most clearly. Mm -hmm. His moves on trade and particularly on technology. I think it's more a technology war than a trade war. They'll strike a deal on trade eventually, but technology is going to be very tough. The United States wants to deny technology to China at this point, particularly as a gap in power reduces between them, just like they try to, to deny it to the Soviet Union. And I think, you know, as you say, it's going to intensify. And it's not easy to see at all at this stage. If China makes the jump 
from a middle-income country to a first-rate, high-level economy, then uh, you know, the game is really on. And the United States, demographically being much smaller, will lose. So I think the Americans have decided that technology is where it's at. They've got to stop technology development in China. But again, I want to say that technology exporting is not the same as ideological exporting. So the elements of the Cold War are there, and it's like the Cold War, but it's not the same as a Cold War. Yeah, everything is not about ideology, to be sure, in a Cold War. This is denial of technology to stop China's capabilities growing. In fact, to me, it looks like a new containment. The Americans want to deny technology, hurt China to the point that the Chinese economy stagnates at this level, and if that happens, they're hoping, betting, certainly some of the new cold warriors are, that this will uh, undermine the rule of the Communist Party and will lead to regime change, just as it did eventually in the Soviet Union when they fell behind America technologically. So we've talked about the ideological, political differences, the competition, and economic differences. What about now the issue of the military? In a Cold War, uh, one of the things the two contestants have to make sure is that they don't fall into war inadvertently and that they have un understandings about the level of arms, how to use those arms, how to manage crises and confrontations. So arms control, confidence building measures. And I would say in a very short point that the United States and China have shown that sensitively. They have a set of discussions and tacit understandings, if not explicit ones, about how to regulate military competition. What do you say about that? Well, I think that the exchanges, the military exchanges are going on, but I, I have, I believe that these exchanges are less robust. Cyber espionage is a huge concern, and Americans are already very suspicious of the Chinese about cyber espionage, uh, about 5G. So that will actually throw a spanner in the works for um, all these confidence building measures. You're going to find that the distrust levels are going to increase, um, not only through trade, but also in the military sphere. Non-traditional security challenges these days. Uh, the biggest one is in cyber threat, cyber espionage, cyber security. That's a big issue between the two countries. And this is a very big issue. It creates distrust that will throw a spanner in the works on confidence building measures. Now, this is one key aspect that the, that the old Cold War does not have, which is that technological change in the current world, in telecommunications, in technology, in, every, in this kind of sphere, is actually changing the face of the game. And in this instance, the two countries don't really know what to do, what are the rules of the game. Countries are not prepared to deal with cybersecurity issues. There's also worries that through this cyber espionage and cyber security threats, the Chinese together with the Russians could try and interfere politically in countries, particularly during election times. Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, point, and for once, I agree with you. We've yet to discuss the role that soft power is playing now in the current tensions between the US and China. You have China coming up with the idea of Belt and Road Initiative. The idea is to uh, win friends for China. It is soft power, um, as we can see it in action. It is about China's economic largest to those around it and as well to other parts of the world. You can see that uh, the United States and other countries that it's allied with are also trying to catch up on soft power. The United States and uh, the Quad countries of Australia, Japan, India have announced uh, infrastructure funding as well. Different projects to counter the BRI. It stresses a, a set of peaceful values that we, is inclusive, that we can coexist, and uh, freedoms of the seas, navigation and all. So that actually is a very key component of this current tension, this competition between the two countries that is not quite there in the old Cold War. Yeah, I think that's an interesting uh, point and I'm tempted to agree with you. But I think what you are ignoring and downplaying are the traditional territorial conflicts, the flashpoints. Taiwan, uh, the conflict with Japan over the uh, Senkaku Daewoo Islands, the South China Sea conflicts, then I think the world looks much more difficult and, and scary. And again, harkens back to uh, the old Cold War. Those are interesting developments, but soft power at the end of the day uh, is not really going to be very decisive in, the, in, this, in this competition. It's going to be the flash. The United States and China, despite all that's going on, really do not want a military blow-up. Throughout the years since the Cold War, during the Cold War period and now, both sides have actually established contact, SOPs. This is an old problem which both sides are used to dealing with. So that gives you some level of comfort 
in its own staff. Both sides know what they are doing. They have certain parameters that they will not cross. I don't think they're going to go to war over it, but it's the possibility that they'll miscommunicate, that someone in the field will make a mistake, that they will mistake each other's uh, true intentions, that at a particular moment with domestic uh, uh, troubles. If you recall, in the early 2000s, you have the EP3 incident and the bombing of the Chinese embassy in Belgrade. Uh, that created a period of tensions between China and the US. But as you can see, both governments were working really hard to prevent that from becoming something that will actually disrupt the progress in their relationship. So I think the management crisis is there to deal with this kind of situations, and both governments, if there were an accident, would try and resolve it as peacefully as possible. So I think that actually we're witnessing the shadow of a Cold War, not the Cold War itself. I mean, I see what you mean, I understand the elements that are very similar to the old Cold War, but for me, the main component is the ideological component. Because China is not a ideological coherent country, there is no ideological challenge to the United States. And therefore, to me, that's not a Cold War. But I can't agree, this is not a soulless uh, power competition. There's ideology here, it's a Cold War.